Uh, our first presenter of our second act is a poet, collage artist, acting enthusiast. I want to know what that means. Uh, an interior design lover, so don't hit on him outside, he's only indoors. Uh, and he currently serves as the Vice President of the Vulnerable Population Program at the Center for Newcomers. Please welcome Boven Stojanovic. Hello everyone. Um, first part was very emotional, I think, and uh, somehow it bring me to the level to become like very vulnerable. And my biggest, I think, vulnerability, even I'm like here for eight years, is um, public speaking in English. Because I always think like I can't express myself in the way I want, and like you know, all that kind of things. So I will do my best, but I need a little bit of flaw. <laughs> okay, let's start. I was a little boy when I realized I was not like most boys around me. I didn't like to fight, I didn't like to ride a bike, I didn't like to swim, I was not obsessed with my father's car and hated all the games created to prove someone's physical strength. But what I like was playing with the girls. Whatever they did seems more creative and valuable. Games like cooking, cleaning, making dresses for dolls, or even just gossiping were more exciting than any other boy's game. But however, my family wasn't happy about it, and from a young age, I became familiar with t terms like weird of, or black sheep of family, and it sensed it was, I sensed it was not socially acceptable for me as a boy to play with the girls. So I had no other choice but to find my own refuge. I was looking for sanctuary, a safe space and safe place to use my imagination in the way I wanted and also safe place to be whoever I wanted to be. And then I did some small research and after a while, I found that place under a massive dining table where my lovely grandmother, a dressmaker, used to tailor fabulous dresses and skirts and jackets and pants from only a few pieces of fabric. She often made skirts or jackets or something else from the remaining fabrics, which she usually gave to working class primarily poor women from her neighborhood. And all of them were always so grateful and so happy to have something they were not able to afford. My grandmother, she never um, said to them something like, oh, you know, I just have these like leftovers uh, from someone's dress and I didn't know what to do with them, so here it is. No, she always said, look at this piece. This is for you and I hope it fits you well. What I learned from my grandmother was all about human dignity. The value of what we give to others is in our intention. And from today's point of view, there is something a little bit about sustainable fashion too, obviously. Her acts of kindness and care and solidarity are deeply engraved in my memory and her philosophy became part of my mindset and one of the most crucial landmarks in my life. And they will always be there. But life itself, so many years uh, later, I found myself in a strange position. I was 38 old um, refugee with two suitcases and I didn't know anyone in this city. I spoke not broken but crushed English and I had <laughs> No money, no job, and no idea about my future. I had no choice but to be open to any kind of support. I believe that everything is okay and everything will be okay and everything will be okay, but however, I was always uncomfortable accepting things like a can of beans or someone's um, winter jacket. But again, I was just grateful because someone offered something to me. And thanks to all these people, who showed, unexpectedly, uh, showed up unexpected, unexpectedly in my life, I could take one small step at a time 
and keep walking even though I didn't know where I was heading. The kindness of unknown people created a sweet obligation to become the best version of myself under certain circumstances, and even more importantly, they obliged me to give back to community if I can. And here we are. A middle-aged Canadian gay citizen on the stage of Grand Theater. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I have six minutes and 40 seconds to share something that is supposed to be beneficial for you, and I feel like Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> so, there are three things that we can do to make this world a little bit better place, a place where no one, or at least significant majority, is left behind. So, first thing is give a little, but give it every single day. It can be a smile, it can be a hug, it could be something simple like question, how are you doing today? It can be a donut, small donation, your volunteer time, whatever, but just give something every single day. Second thing is open your heart. Open your heart to people you don't like and open your heart to people who hurts you. These people are injured too. They don't know any other way to prove their existence, and the best way to win against them is not anger or fear, but the attitude that says how I can support you. And third thing is simple. There is no Miss World who create world peace yet. <laughs> Think about the person who is next to you now. Smile at them. Or offer them a room to cry or to celebrate. Think about a group of people no bigger than a few, but give them maximum amount of your support and understanding. And here she is unavoidable, the biggest one, Maya Angelou, and her famous quote, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Inspired by my grandmother philosophy and practice, I became a college artist. I strive to use every single piece of paper, no matter how small or hopeless it is, to create something new, enriching, and exciting. This approach extends to all aspects of my life, where I make sure that nothing and no one is left behind. Thank you.